Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Welcome back guys. Uh, this session title is How does a deep neural network work? It's a very exciting section because we're going to look at a lot of very interesting things that are at, really at the core of uh, uh, all the deep learning revolution. In particular, we're going to look at um, what are the main components of a neural network. Uh, we're going to look at the perceptron, which is one of the first types of uh, neural networks ever invented. And more importantly, we're going to then uh, dissect uh, the perception, perceptron and understand uh, very important concepts. Uh, for instance, uh, how activation functions look like, what is their impact on the behavior of uh, individual neurons and on the network as a whole. So without further ado, let's dive into it. To do that, uh, I would like to tell a story. Um, this is uh, 1958 and uh, uh, there's a lot of things going on in the world, especially in the US, um, moon landing uh, and other uh, great inventions. But uh, there is uh, Frank Rosenblatt, an American psychologist that gets a PhD from Cornell University. Uh, this guy, um, for the ones who are not knowing him, he can be considered as one of the fathers of modern artificial intelligence. The reason why uh, he's uh, so famous in the domain is because in 2000, sorry, in 1958, he published this seminal paper uh, called the Deperceptron, and uh, this invention, by the way, led to the development of. Um, uh, an hardware device called the Mark I Perceptron in 1960, and it is considered as one of the first computers with learning capability. So at the core of this amazing technology, if you think about the time, it was really, really a breakthrough. There was a neural network that mimicked the human brain biological structure. Now let's recall quickly uh, what is uh, the biological structure of the brain, or you know, more broadly speaking, how a neuron, uh, which is the uh, unit that is at the core of um, a human brain, looks like. Well, if you uh, were taking a, a microscope, uh, the uh, neurons or a neuron would look like this. So you would have a, um, a basic unit uh, that is called the nucleus uh, here in the center of the slide. And, um, and then you would have uh, other parts like for instance uh, an axon uh, that is uh, essentially at its most basic uh, a, a tube, uh, a structure that essentially uh, brings forward uh, uh, electrical signals and uh, it does essentially do that by taking signals from the nucleus uh, to uh, the uh, end of uh, the neuron to other neurons. You also have uh, a synapse uh, and this is really a connector. Again, it connects axon terminals of one neuron uh, to the next one. So, how many of these type of cells that essentially are carrying uh, um, signals or propagating signals do we have in our brain? Well, a lot of them. Uh, if, if you look at this graph, uh, humans are here at the bottom and they have 86 billion brains brain neurons um, it is worth noticing that we are not the ones uh, which lead the chart because elephants for instance have 251 billion neurons so at least uh, at, um, almost three times as uh, as much as humans now uh, while quantity doesn't mean quality uh, it is uh, certain that uh, when it comes to um, specific uh, cognitive functions, like for instance memory, um, having a high capacity of uh, um, neurons can make a difference. And uh, I think, uh, you know, take with a pinch of salt what I'm saying uh, right now, but I think that elephants are known to have a, a very, very, very good memory. So we would like now to give um, to give you an idea of uh, how the uh, this biological structure of the neuron uh, was 
implemented uh, into software by Rosenblatt. To do that, I will use this graph, where essentially you see um, some uh, elements that you might remember from uh, the previous uh, sections. Again, here we have inputs with weights. Then we have a function uh, that is called activation function. Uh, and then we have an output. This is essentially it. So this is uh, how Rosenblatt imagined uh, a, a software representation of a neuron. Uh, you have uh, some um, signals, some input signals. You have so, some weights that are um, obviously selecting the most important input signals. Then you have an aggregation function and then a step function uh, or activation function that provides you an output. What I will do now is to uh, give you an insight on how this thing works uh, from a mathematical perspective. Uh, very simple stuff, don't worry about it. But I just want to give you an idea of um, uh, how, how data and signals propag propagate uh, on uh, a single neuron. The first thing that you um, might want to remember is that in the Rosenblatt structure, the output is really a zero or a one. Very, very simple stuff. And uh, you essentially have activation of the neuron when you get an, a one and deactivation uh, when uh, the neuron doesn't fire and outputs at zero. How these two numbers are computed? Well, it's very simple. You just follow this, the schema here. So you multiply each weight for uh, the corresponding input. You aggregate with a sum, and you can see here the, the formalism. And then with a the step function, uh, you define a threshold and you decide uh, whether or not this amount is bigger than threshold. That's fair enough. Now let's, can we make this a little bit simpler? Yes, absolutely. So what we're gonna do now is to um, rewrite the uh, formula on the top with a formula on the bottom. So what do we did we do here? Well, first of all, uh, we swapped the sums for a dot product. It's essentially the same thing. It's just a notation, which is a little bit neater. And then we uh, brought the threshold uh, inside this inequality on the, on the right part. So what we did here was essentially to define threshold equal to minus B, uh, bring it to the left. And here we have what is called the bias. Uh, the bias is really a threshold that regulates how easy the neuron can fire. Because if this is um, this is very high uh, and uh, it's a, it's a negative um, term, uh, obviously the activations here, or the sum of the activations, need to be very high in turn. Uh, I would like now to uh, wrap up this section and um, um, just to um, share the main message here. We have defined what a neuron is. A neuron is the basic unit of a neural network, being it a shallow neural network or a deep neural network. And uh, each neuron has an input and uh, provides an output in turn. So uh, when you think about um, a neutron, really uh, think about uh, a bulb that when reached by a certain, certain amount of uh, electricity or a threshold voltage, it lights up. Uh, I think that this uh, analogy will help you um, fixing in your memory what a neuron is and how it works. Now, obviously the neuron is just uh, one single unit, but how are neural networks uh, created using this single unit? Well, uh, as you have seen in the previous um, section, we have inputs and we multiply or we replicate um, the structure of the, each neuron uh, into uh, the network. So we assemble multiple neurons in uh, one layer that we call I. Each neuron that you saw in the previous slide is uh, called J. Uh, so the combination of I and J gives you the position of a single neuron inside your network. And, that, and that's it. 
So each neuron will have uh, an output, Z. Uh, so we have neuron J uh, in layer I, output is Z, and we write the output as uh, this uh, uh, equality. Uh, we multiply the weights, W, J, uh, for the various inputs, and we sum the biases. Now, uh, it is worth noticing that we can assemble multiple layers, um, and typically, in uh, its simplest form, a neural, neural network contains three layers, an input layer, a, a let's say, hidden or intermediate layer, and an output layer. But nothing really changes. So the scope of the learning, and this is a very, very important, uh, uh, very important concept, is to determine what the weights look like. Now, if we take uh, an example from uh, a fashion mist, an image of a shoe, this is a grayscale image, um, and um, we apply or we show this image to the network, the, the scope of the network is to give you an answer, like for instance, ankle boot, uh, that corresponds or describes uh, the uh, input. Now, in this case, uh, the answer is wrong because it doesn't look like an ankle boot, an ankle boot looks like this. So the real answer that we were looking for was sneaker. Um, so the network in this case, uh, given an example, gave uh, the wrong uh, output. So we have to train the network and to train the network, uh, essentially we will have to compute um, the weights and also the biases that essentially give over time good answers consistently. And we do this by uh, showing multiple examples and shifting or tweaking uh, a little bit um, each time at each iteration or each epoch, all the biases and all the uh, weights that are involved into these answers so that from the wrong uh, output we can then um, get the right answer which is sneaker now at the core of all this as we mentioned before there is a function which is called the activation function uh, so what i would like to do now is to show a couple of them because we will see how important these are even in uh, deep learning. Now, the first two activation functions that I want to show you is uh, are the perception function, which is a step function, uh, and then a sigmoid perception, perception that you can see here on the um, right. So these are the equations. Um, it's a little bit more complicated for the sigmoid perception, but you can see that this is a sigmoid. Uh, now the good property of a sigmoid is that it transitions between it transition between uh, zero and one in a less abrupt uh, fashion. While here, uh, for uh, the perceptron, we really have uh, um, activation or full deactivation. Obviously, this is more complicated, and um, we will see that this is not an optimal solution for um, deep learning uh, networks, for instance. Are these two the only activation functions available? Absolutely not. We have many more. So beyond uh, a sigmoid, uh, we have uh, um, a other shapes uh, that more or less uh, uh, look similar. Actually, ReLU, it's um, very different. And uh, we will see that ReLU, uh, especially ReLU, is uh, super easy to compute and super fast to compute on GPUs. So bear in mind uh, that uh, this is our uh, reference choice when uh, we're going to train uh, our deep le learning networks. And then th there are other variants of uh, uh, ReLUs. Okay, guys, let's wrap up. Let's, uh, um, let's um, revise some definitions. So the first thing that I would like to say is that Again, activation function are super important. They decide whether or not uh, the, a, a specific neuron should activate, should fire, should propagate information. 
Uh, then we have biases, and uh, you know, we haven't talked a lot about them yet, but we will see that they are super important uh, because, in a sense, uh, they determine uh, whether or not uh, a neuron uh, fires uh, easily or uh, or not. Weight, uh, well, that's uh, that's at the ba at the base of the learning. So, uh, by increasing or decreasing a, a weight, uh, you modify. Uh, essentially your activation function. Uh, we also define input layers. These are a group of uh, neurons. Uh, there are uh, obviously different kinds of layers. I define the three of them, output and hidden layer, depending on where they are on the uh, network. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.